Hello. In this video, I want to talk about the concept of pinning version numbers when you're using Cake. Now, depending on who you're talking to uh, and, and in what context, pinning version numbers can actually be mean, mean one of two things. The first one is the actual version of Cake itself that you're running. And the second one is the version number of the tools and the add-ins that you're using within your Cake script. Now, both of those things are very important, and I want to talk through about talk through both of those in this video and uh, reiterate that the recommendation from the Cake team is that you pin both to a specific version of Cake and also to a specific version of the tools and add-ins that you're using within your Cake scripts. The reason that we recommend that is because it's that pinning of those version numbers that will uh, ensure that the build works the same each and every time you run it. If you don't pin to a specific version of Cake, and or pin to a specific version of the tools and add-ins, then one day your build could be working fine, but then the next day when you run the build again, it's pulled down a new version of Cake and it's pulled down a new version uh, of a tool and add-in and something doesn't work the way it was before. So you want to avoid doing that uh, because at the end of the day, you want your build to be the same each and every time. Now, we, the Cake team, try to ensure that between releases of Cake, that we don't introduce any breaking changes. But the fact of the matter is th things happen and we can't guarantee, although we try, we can't guarantee that uh, we're not going to break something that uh, it works a, a, in a specific way within your build scripts. So again, the recommendation is to pin to a specific version of Cake and also to a specific version of each of the tools and add-ins that you're using within your Cake scripts. So what I'm looking at here within uh, this Visual Studio Code folder that I've got open is a very simple Cake script that all it's doing is making use of the cake.figlet add-in and also it's uh, finding the, the version number of Cake that's currently uh, running the script and then emitting that to the console as well. So if I go ahead and run this, what we're going to see is going to, we're going to see some nice uh, ASCII art output in the form of Hello World and we're going to see that I'm running version 0.20.0 of Cake. If I run the same build again locally without making any changes, I'm going to get the exact same results. Never, nothing's ever going to change because it's already downloaded Cake for me. I've got all the add-ins in my tools folder and the, the build is going to be the same each and every time. Now, the reason I know that is because the first thing that this uh, PowerShell Bootstrapper did for me was it downloaded the latest version of uh, the packages.config file. And in there, it's told me that the latest version is 0.20.0. Then on top of that, it's looked at the preprocessor scripts that I've got at the top here, and it's downloaded the latest version of the cake.figlet add-in into the, my add-ins folder within my tools folder. Now, if we imagine a scenario where uh, this build has work, been working fine uh, today, and then tomorrow we release a new version of Cake. And in that new version of Cake, there's been a breaking change. If we don't pin to a specific version of Cake, and we're running on, say, a continuous integration server like uh, AppVare, what AppVare does is it uh, doesn't cache the output, or the, it doesn't cache the, the files that have been generated as part of the build. So as part of the build, this tools folder was created for me. So if I go ahead and delete that and imagine that we're running on the app bear environment where we're getting a fresh clone of our repository each and every time, and if I run this build again, what it's going to do, it's going to repopulate that tools folder and it's going to re reintroduce that packages.config file and we're going to see that we're going to get a new version of Cake. So we, where we were running 0.20.0, I've now got 0.21.1. Now, the reason that, that happened is because in this scenario that I'm describing here, where we're running on AppVare and we don't have a cache of any of those uh, build output files, and we haven't checked in this, or we haven't committed this packages.config file into our repository, what's happened is that Cake has went and fetched the latest and greatest version of all the uh, artifacts that it requires. And the first thing it did was it downloaded a new version of Cake. Now, again, we try not to break anything, but the point of the matter is that things do happen and your build might break as a result of a new version. So the recommendation is to pin to a specific version. And the way that you can do that is if you look at this uh, git ignore repository on GitHub, you'll actually see that part of the recommendation uh, for the Visual Studio 
template for the git ignore file is to actually uh, ignore everything that goes into the tools folder because you don't want to check in all the binaries uh, that are uh, checked in as part of the build. But what you do want to do is you specifically don't want to ignore the package.config file. We want to see the package.config file as an artifact in your repository. So what that means is, if we imagine a scenario where we have got that package.config file, but we don't have, uh, let's delete the cake folder, and we'll delete the, the MD5 uh, sum file, We'll talk about that in a, in a later video, maybe. But if we imagine the scenario that now this is what we've got in our repository. Then the next time we run that build on our continuous integration server, such as AppFair, the next time it runs is it's going to give me that exact same version of Cake. It's going to give me that same version that's pinned into that packages.config file. So if you don't have that package.config file in your repository today, I definitely recommend that you go ahead and do it. Now, the next part that I want to talk about is the uh, preprocessor directives. So what I've got here at the top level of my Cake script is I've got an add-in that says I want to use Cake.figlet. So in the same way that the bootstrapper went out and got the latest version of Cake, every time you run the script, if you don't have that Cake.figlet folder, so if I go ahead and delete that, and I run the build again, Cake's going to go out and fetch the latest version of that cake.fidlet file. That's what happens by default. If, if all you've got is uh, this bare uh, add-in directive at the top here, it's going to fetch the latest and greatest. Now, from time to time, new versions of cake.add-ins get released in the same way as Cake does. So if you haven't pinned to a specific version of Cake, then again, you might run into problems. So the recommendation here is if we go back up to this preprocessor directive and we add in ampersand version, equals 0 0.4.0, which is the latest one. That's the, I know that that's the latest version of uh, the cake.figlet add-in. What's going to happen now is, again, if I go ahead and delete this and run the build again, then what's going to be downloaded is that specific version that of 0 0.4.0 of that cake.figlet add-in. So again, my build is going to be far more reproducible because I've now got the same version of Cake being executed uh, for every build, and I've got the same version of the add-in that I need uh, being used for every build as well. Now, you can actually go slightly further with the uh, preprocessor directive. And again, it would be a recommendation. Uh, and you can go further, and you can specify a specific URL to use for downloading it as well. So the default URL that's being used is this one that I've just uh, used in here. But if for whatever reason you're using an internal <clears throat> ProGet repository or you're using uh, add-ins that are coming from a different source, then you might want to use a specific source to download that. So in my case here, nothing changes. But what does happen is that I'm being far more specific about the add-in that I want to use, where I'm getting that add-in from, and more importantly, what version of that add-in I want to use as well. So I hope that this has been useful and it illustrates that by default, Cake, when it executes, is going to try and pull down the latest version of all of its uh, artifacts and dependencies. But what you should be doing is you should be pinning to specific versions of both Cake and the tools and add-ins that you're making use of within your scripts as well. Hopefully this was helpful. Thank you very much for listening.